As the coronavirus spreads across Africa, many countries are responding aggressively to flatten the curve. Regional experts say a widespread pandemic could cripple the continent's fragile healthcare systems and be devastating economically. Africa 54's Paul Ndiho spoke to Dr. Amit Taka, the Nairobi-based chairperson of the Africa Healthcare Federation. Taka says that Africa needs a united approach in dealing with COVID-19. We've seen what developed countries are going through. And now that we have the virus in Africa with about over 5,700 cases, some countries have more than the others, I think everyone, government, private sector, civil society, development partners are all on the forefront and preparing to ensure that we flatten the curve. As you know, the ability of our health systems is even weaker than many of the countries that have faced um, high levels of uh, mortality. How much, uh, in terms of preparedness, uh, do you think our countries or African countries have, have done? I think they have uh, really tried to prepare as much as they can. You know, the conditions are different from country to country. You cannot really copy paste what Italy does or Spain does or UK does in countries in Africa. Um, we should scale up our preparedness. But let's look at Kenya, for example, where I am. Our president and the Minister of Health uh, leading the government efforts are totally on the ball about what's happening of cor on Corona. The private sector has regrouped itself in an organized manner to provide the support it needs. And we know that it's only through the efforts of every citizen and every sector to make this coronavirus, uh, to battle this coronavirus. I've been home for the last uh, three weeks, uh, working from home. Uh, we can barely go out. I, I wonder how it's like on your end. Uh, there are measures being taken to try and prevent transmission. As you know, in Africa right now, we are focusing on the big three goals. The first goal is prevent transmission. The second goal is prevent death. And the third one is preventing social harm. All our activities are geared towards these three goals. The coordination is at its highest at the national level. And right now, everyone is facing down in their own countries, looking at strategies, collaboration and cooperation to keep the numbers down and flatten the curve, as they say. But I must also <clears throat> uh, let you know that Africa Union has also been working extremely hard to have a continental approach. The, the chairperson, uh, Cyril Ramaphosa, the president of South Africa, announced just a few days ago that a continental approach is absolutely vital on the fight of coronavirus. Uh, you spoke about uh, funding. The U.S. government mm -hmm. announced that uh, it's going to uh, maybe try to help some of uh, uh, the countries in Africa that are in a very dire situation. Some African countries have also received uh, funding from uh, different sources. Do you think this is really enough uh, to tackle the kind of challenge that uh, we're dealing with? We need the support now, not later. I understand that these calamities are affecting many countries around the world. But we need that support. And um, the funding is literally not enough. What do you think can be done, at least uh, to mitigate uh, uh, or not replicate what we are seeing here in the United States and in Europe? I agree. We have to scale it up. We have to have public messaging. Uh, we need to really convince people in Africa that this is real and uh, change their mindset about uh, coronavirus and its... Uh, um, its impact. Do you think that uh, some of the measures that have been put in place by some of the presidents on the continent to stop uh, the transmission that you're talking about are going to be effective? It's already working in some cases. I can tell you that when we stopped the import or we stopped the flights, we, we, we probably stopped a lot of imported cases. When we started teaching or showing everyone about hand washing and social distancing, I think we've made an impact. But it's not enough. Africa needs the support and Africa requires a united approach in dealing with COVID-19.